optimism and hope for the common denominator of over 80 ethnicity, a country with 3,000 years of glorious history and culture, mother of freedom. Ethiopia Are you looking to earn working remotely, from anywhere with maximum flexibility and convenient? Do you have a talent or services to offer to your clients? You have great chance of working on several jobs or projects for multiple clients at one time. Or are you a business owner or employer who are looking for hiring freelancer to work on your project? Well, if that's yes, please click the link below to learn more about and get started. Welcome to Ethiopia Today. We will be focusing on the following topics on our presentation. Premier in Brussels to attend EUO summit. A Kenyan driver guilty of kidnapping Cuban doctors. USA sees rise in intimidation of public officials. We invite you to stay tuned until the end to get the full messages. And also please like and share. And subscribe if you haven't yet done so. The details are presented as follow. Premier in Brussels to attend EUO summit. Ethiopia's high-level government delegation led by Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed arrived yesterday in Brussels, Belgium to attend the 6th European Union African Summit, according to the Office of the Prime Minister. Apart from attending the summit, Abiy will also confer with leaders of EU member states and institutions in matters of mutual significance. During the two-day summit, leaders are expected to discuss how both continents can build greater prosperity. EU wants to rival China's Belt and Road in Africa. EU plans on this Africa summit in Brussels include launch of ambitious package after Global Gateway pledged to mobilize up to 300 billion euros. Divisions within the bloc on how much and what to fund risk reducing it all to a simple rebranding of existing project allocations observers warn according to the South China Morning Post. Two weeks ago before the 6th EU African Union summit began European Union members said to have been split on how to come up with a financial package able to rival China's multi-billion dollar Belt and Road Initiative. The EU Africa Summit in Brussels include the launch of an ambitious Africa Europe investment package taking into account global challenges such as climate change and the current health crisis. In December, the 27 member bloc announced it would mobilize up to 300 euros or US $343.5 billion in public and private investments around the world by 2027. Working out to 60 billion euros a year, the funds would be used to help emerging economies heal from the coronavirus pandemic, which has pushed many African countries into debt distress. Dubbed the Global Gateway, the plan is a response to China's growing economic and political clout in Africa via its transcontinental belt and road infrastructure and investment strategy, with European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen pitching it as a true alternative. The European Union, with the backing of French President Emmanuel Macron, holder of the EU's six month rotating presidency until June, had proposed an initial annual investment package worth €20 billion Euros for African infrastructure. However, observers say that agreeing on member states' financial commitments and deciding on the projects that will receive the funding has become problematic. There is quite some debate and a wide divergence of interests among EU members behind the scenes, according to Dr. Tim Zajant's political science lecturer at the University of Freiburg in Germany. He said Spain wanted to see more projects in North Africa. The Germans doubted that all the projects were carefully thought through while Hungary, Finland and Portugal pointed out that they first had to budget for the additional development projects. But commitments should be expected at the Brussels edition of the Triennial EU African Union Summit hosted the last time by the Ivory Coast in 2017. The event had to be postponed in 2020 over coronavirus disruptions such as flight suspensions and border shutdowns. Despite obvious internal squabbles over the EU's strategic reorientation towards Africa, the EU will propose a bundle of projects at the summit to add credibility to its claim that Europe offers a viable alternative to China's Belt and Road Initiative, Zajons noted. For nearly a decade, China has funded and built mega projects, including ports, highways, power plants, and railways in Africa, Asia, and parts of Europe under its Belt and Road Plan. However, such investments, especially in Africa, have drawn criticism from the U.S. and other Western nations that claim China's lending practices were luring poor states into debt traps. As criticism grows over African debt, Chinese lenders have become more cautious, especially over mega-infrastructure projects. Recently, the Nigerian transport minister Rodomi Amici said Chinese loans had been delayed and the country was now looking to Europe for funding to complete infrastructure, especially its railways. Aside from the size of the financing package, the terms of funding will also affect how likely African countries are likely to take it up. The EU's renewed interest in Africa also comes amid growing criticism of how it handled the coronavirus pandemic by closing its borders without consultation, especially after South African scientists discovered the Omicron coronavirus variant late last year. 
African countries at the summit may push for deals to manufacture vaccines locally and also seek concessional loans to fund projects. However, it remains to be seen whether the EU presents a financing package approaching China's massive outlays on infrastructure in Africa according to W. Jude Moore, senior policy fellow with the Washington-based think tank Center for Global Development and a former public works minister in Liberia. One can be cautiously optimistic, Moore said, but pointed out that The Economist recently described the EU's global gateway as largely a mixture of existing commitments, loan guarantees, and heroic assumptions about the ability of the club to crowd in private investment rather than actual new spending. If this is indicative of what is to come it is not promising, Moore said. At the 2021 Forum on China-Africa Cooperation in late November Chinese President Xi Jinping promised US $40 billion of investments into Africa including exports and credit line support. According to the Center for Global Development with the African Union EU summit having stalled repeatedly African leaders have strengthened ties with other global powers including China. The December Forum on China-Africa Cooperation FOCAC not only demonstrated the impressive depth and breadth of China's relationships with Africa but crucially signaled a new approach based on soft assets very much stepping on the EU's toes. Their 300 billion euros worldwide connectivity strategy more co-wrote in an analysis for the think tank. Moritz Weigel, founding director of the Germany-based firm China Africa Advisory said that so far the unveiling of financing packages under the Global Gateway had been limited to relabeling of existing commitments or lofty announcements on mobilizing investment. It will be interesting to see whether the EU-Africa summit results in any more concrete pledges for new and additional finance, or if existing allocations for bilateral cooperation and potential EIB European Investment Bank co-financing simply get an EU-Africa branding, Weigel said. The EU is not alone in wanting to counter China's Belt and Road plan. The G7 nations led by the US last year unveiled their Build Back Better World B3W initiative framed it as a values-driven high-standard and transparent infrastructure partnership led by major democracy. A brainchild of U.S. President Joe Biden, the B3W plan aims to invest U.S. $40 trillion by 2035 in developing nations including in Africa where China is the largest financier and infrastructure contractor. More at the Center for Global Development said funds from European lenders would be extended on commercial terms which is why the Nigerians initially sought Chinese loans since China's export-import bank rates are cheaper than commercial rates. Borrowing from other sovereigns allows for wiggle room that is not available from commercial borrowers. It is also unclear if Nigeria will be deemed creditworthy or safe by commercial lenders for the size of the loan required for these projects, Moore said. A Kenyan driver guilty of kidnapping Cuban doctors A Kenyan driver assigned to two Cuban doctors abducted in 2019 guilty of kidnapping. A former Mandara County government driver assigned to two Cuban doctors abducted in 2019 has been found guilty of kidnapping. During a ruling by Milamani Law Court's magistrate Martha Nanzushi on Wednesday Isaac Ibrin Robo was found guilty and convicted for being involved in the kidnapping of Landy Rodriguez a surgeon and Hirakure a general physician. While convicting the driver the magistrate noted that the prosecution had proved beyond reasonable doubt that he was actively involved in the commission of a terrorist act, kidnapping and hostage-taking aiding and abetting a terrorist act. After evaluating the evidence on record I find the prosecution has proved the charges against the accused person Harin and El Convictim accordingly under Section 215 of the Criminal Procedure Code Nanzushi ruled. Ibrin is said to have handed over the doctors to terrorists on April 12, 2019 while driving them to Mandara Referral Hospital using a government vehicle. On the material day at around 9am the medics were being driven by the accused and in the escort of two police officers before they were ambushed by Al-Shabaab militia who blocked the way with two pro-boxes as they started shooting. The militia managed to escape to the neighboring Somalia with the doctors who went missing for over two months before they were released. However, one of the administration police constables who was escorting the medics was shot dead during the incident. Ibrin was arrested on April 12, 2019 in Mandra by the anti-terror police unit officers and flown to Nairobi on April 14, 2019 to be interrogated and arraigned. According to the evidence presented the suspect who was a driver attached to Mandra County government was using two mobile phone numbers to communicate with the terrorists. Attention business owners, let me ask you something, what if I told you that your website have its own chat support staff for 24-7 and interact with your site visitors and get their questions answered? Or help you generate more sales on many websites as you wish for small one-time fee? And what if I told you that you can do all these without hiring staff, virtual agents and sophisticated platforms? Do you want to know more about this cutting-edge software? Click the link on the description section below.
USA sees rise in intimidation of public officials. A nationwide rising wave of threats to public officials has sparked concern in the United States, a Reuters report said Tuesday. Reuters said it documented more than 220 terroristic threats and hostile messages through contacts and interviews with 33 board members across 15 U.S. states and a review of threatening and harassing messages obtained from school officials or through public records requests. The report said that such intimidation messages are ignited by roiling controversies over policies on curtailing the coronavirus, bathroom access for transgender students and the teaching of America's racial history. Regarding complaints of school officials worrying about personal security the report said they are part of a rising national wave of threats to public officials including election officials and members of Congress. Thanks for staying with us. If you enjoyed our presentation, give us a like and share to your social contacts. And also don't forget to subscribe and tap on the notification bell if this is your first time. Please also check on our collection of favorites on the description section below. See you on our next video. Many thanks. May God bless Ethiopia and its people.